So in Kinley, Francis here for Morton Uncovered Private Tours inside St. Magnus Cathedral. So we're inside St. Magnus Cathedral and I'm going to quietly tell you a bit about uh, the building of the cathedral um, and some of the features and amazing artifacts and graves within inside the cathedral. Uh, I have asked permission uh, from the staff here at the cathedral so I'll keep my voice down and uh, we'll do the inside tour. At the very top here, what you can see is a stained glass window. And this stained glass window dates back to 1987 and it marks um, 850 years since the foundation of St. Magnus Cathedral. Right at the very top, you can see an ax. And that ax was used to kill Magnus on the island of Egosay. And around about April the 15th, 1117, the big ball of orange underneath is to represent the flood of gas flare. So one of our main industries here in Orkney's Islands is oil and gas. Underneath, what you can see at the very bottom is a um, lion or crusade, um, crusade type figure. Um, on the right hand side at the very bottom, you can see the crusade cross and the Primula Scotica flowers. The Viking longboat on the left, Christ and some of our main crops, which is barley here in Orkney. So this window was in place in 1987, unveiled by Queen Elizabeth II. So what we have here is a, a building uh, that was first erected in 1137 and um, based on the same sort of cathedral type design as you would see in Durham Cathedral in England. At the very top, what you can see in the cathedral um, are um, big vaulted windows. The cathedral was built over approximately 300 years and the 300 years cathedral, well at the very start of it you would have had 12th century Romanesque architecture. That's what you see here with these pillars and the rounded arches and then right at the top it changes to 13th century Gothic. So the cathedral is actually on a bit of a slope. So if you were to come into St. Magnus Cathedral, what, let, let a golf ball go. Uh, I'll demonstrate this in future videos. It will run down the middle from the crossing here ahead of us, all the way down to where the font's normally here ahead of me, to this entrance. And that's because St. Magnus Cathedral is still on a slope. So somebody is playing the um, grand piano today, a Steinway and Sons piano. So. What I might do is do a, a separate video after this when it's quiet. So um, these uh, pillars that you can see are on a bit of a slant. So it's named after Magnus Erlinson. He was a ruler here in Orkney in the 12th century, along with his uh, cousin Hacken. Now these two warring cousins did not see eye to eye. So on the island of Egosi, on the 17th of April, 1117, Magnus's death was ordered and ordered by an ax to the head. So not a great way to go, to be honest. So he was given this ax to the head and um, Hacken then took over the following of um, the people in Orkney and became the ruler. About 20 years after Magnus's death, um, his uh, nephew Ronald Colson of Norway came here to Orkney uh, to avenge his uncle's death. And what he ended up doing to try and gain ownership of the Orkney Islands and uh, to gain ownership to bring down the power of Hacken's son Paul is he went about uh, building this cathedral to remember his uncle Magnus. On the walls, what you can see here um, are stonemason marks. So these stonemason marks are from 12th century stonemasons or a type of writing or signature uh, that would allow the stonemasons to be paid for the work that they've done. So you can see them all over the cathedral. On every one of the pillars and the walls somewhere, there are stonemason marks. Down here, you've got a crusade cross, slightly upside down. Upside down crusade cross suggests that Whoever wrote this, his brother or cousin, were killed, was killed in battle. You can also see this plaster work, okay? So in 1540, James V of Scotland disbanded the Catholic Church, Church part of Reformation. So all the beautiful plaster work all around the cathedral was ripped down to the bare sandstone. 
You can't really see it up here in the top, but there is some of the old plaster that still remains. So what he did then uh, with this is uh, James V, as he disbanded the Catholic Church, he ripped down to the bare sandstone. And what was uncovered then were these stonemason marks. So there's thousands of them in the cathedral and possibly one of the best stonemason marks is a 12th century Second Crusade cross in the South Scepter. So as we walk this way, I will show you. As we walk down, you can see the South Scepter here. Now this is one of the best looking 12th century crusade crosses I've ever seen. And I've been to many cathedrals around the world, many of which associated, unfortunately, to the crusades. So that massive crusade cross is the types of crusade crosses you see here um, in the cathedral in Orkney. The young man who's playing the piano is also an artist. And so if you ever come to St. Magnus Cathedral, what you'll be able to see is him uh, painting some of the, uh, the pillars and archways. Um, and also, if you're very lucky like today, uh, listening to him play the piano. So you can see the Norwegian flag and British flag, um, the Burma Star and the British Legion. This is the military section of the cathedral. So any time that you get a military funeral, um, World War II veterans who now are very few and far between, if they were to have a funeral here, this is where the military would normally sit along with the family. So we had a strong bond with Norway, and we, as we still do, uh, we're part of Norway and, and Denmark until 1468, along with Sweden actually. Um, and that's what you see here, the Norwegian flag. What's also interesting about the Norwegian flag is um, during the Second World War, we had a strong bond with Norway. Uh, this is mainly because of the Shetland bus bringing back um, people from, um, you know, evacuating people from Norway um, and using this transport. This here is the Royal Oak Bell from the ward room. 835 men were killed when HMS Royal Oak was torpedoed in Scapa Flow on the 14th of October, 1939. The Book of Remembrance, every Monday morning at 9 a.m., the custodian here in the cathedral turns the page. So everyone in there, every man in there is remembered equally. So this is called St. Ronald's Chapel. This is the most sacred part of St. Magnus Cathedral. The cathedral at the moment is getting a bit of restoration work done to it. Um, so we can only see certain areas. When it becomes tour season, or very busy, uh, during sort of April, May time, it should be, I would have thought, fully open by then. So in the middle here, you can see Ronald Colson of Norway. Uh, Ronald Colson, who founded the cathedral in 1137. His father, Callie Colson, who was an architect, and then Bishop William the Old, the first bishop here at St. Magnus Cathedral in um, 1137. So right at the very top, you've got some of the original plaster work, and here you've got the south window. The cathedral itself is Presbyterian or Church of Scotland, and uh, the minister is um, Reverend um, Fraser McNaughton. Lovely looking font. Over here in the corner, what you have is an effigy of the Arctic explorer, Dr. John Ray. Um, he was the man who was associated with finding the final link with the Northwest Passage and finding out what had happened to Sir John Franklin and his men in the 1845 Arctic expedition in which his men died and the Erebus and Terror lost. Um, when he came back to the UK, he came to the conclusion that the men had um, resorted to cannibalism. So as a result of this, what happened is that the British government said, well, there's no way an upstanding man of the UK would ever resort to cannibalism. Therefore, you must be lying. 
So unfortunately, Dr. John Ray uh, remained in exile uh, until his death. But it's today that we remember um, what this man did. He was born in 1813, and in 2013, a memorial was erected in Stromness to remember him uh, 200 years since his birth. So this is us going from St. Ronald's Chapel further down the steps here towards Magnus's grave. Now, Magnus Erlinson, when he died on the island of Egglesey, his body was then taken to the area of Bursi, one of the islands, sorry, one of the areas or townships within Orkney main land here on Orkney Islands, and uh, kept there for a number of years. And then 1135, his bones were then taken to St. Olaf Kirk in Kirkwall. 1137, his remains were then transferred to the foundations here in St. Magnus Cathedral. And uh, what you can see here, five stones up where my finger is. One, two, three, four, five. Here you can see a second crusade cross. And 1137, um, uh, uh, when the cathedral was founded, his bones were transferred here to uh, the foundations of the cathedral and then to this pillar. So there's a tomb or structure of, of entry here that holds the, the bones of Magnus. It's quite an interesting story, actually, the fact that his bones were transferred um, to St. Magnus Cathedral. And uh, for, for many generations, well, for hundreds of years, they remained inside this pillar. And then shortly before the German scuttle deflate in 1919, stonemasons came here to um, uh, complete their work and to try and pick and point the old masonry and add new. And they came up to this stone and it started wiggling when they cut around it. And they opened it up and they found a box, a um, big wooden box. And inside the box, they found a collection of bones with a skull that has been split straight down the middle. And this is believed to be the, the bones of Magnus. Now in here, we've got something called Marwick's Hole. I'll tell you about that on some other day. Ahead of me, you've got a warrior's grave. It says the burial of Earl Erland Haraldson, who was slain by the forces of Earl Ronald Coulson in a sea fight near the island of Damsey during the night of the 2nd of December. He was buried here on the 23rd of December, 1154. Now, bearing in mind, Ronald Coulson of Norway built this cathedral. He was only in the Orkney Islands for a few years before then heading out to um, the Middle East and to Jerusalem and other areas to fight in the Second Crusade. Um, when he came back to the Orkney Islands, he'd apparently had a bit of a following out with one of the warriors, and this was Erland Haraldson. So he arranged for his death on the island of Damsey in 1154. And as a revenge for this, he was actually then lured to his death in an ambush in Caithness um, in 1158. So Ronald Colson of Norway is also buried inside this uh, cathedral. So you've got Magnus Erlinson at one side, St. Magnus, and then St. Ronald in the other pillar. So both of these pillars, these flat pillars, are tombs. And where you see the Crusade Cross lies um, St. Ronald, and at the other side, uh, St. Magnus. I can appreciate this has been quite a long visit inside St. Magnus Cathedral. Normally when I'm doing a tour, it lasts for about an hour inside the cathedral. So this is a short version. One thing I would add about the cathedral is that it's got a very much a Norse look about it. So the window here at the top, that window has natural light coming into it. It's been redesigned in 2005. Uh, but what you can see at the very top are uh, big wooden beams. And these wooden beams look like the hull of a of Viking longship, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk outside the cathedral. I'm gonna tell you a bit more about the outside of it. And then I'll do a tour for YouTube on the outside of the cathedral um, later on in another area. This young chap, as I mentioned in my video, is very good at piano, a very good pianist, but he's also very good at painting. What is your name? Russell Gilmore. Russell Gilmore. So 
ladies and gents around the world, when you come to the cathedral, he's an amazing artist. You must buy his work, okay? Thank you. All right, you're welcome, Russell. Great pianist as well. So here you've got more of a scale about the absolute size of the pillars. The red sandstone comes from a place called the Head of Holland, near where you would land if you were to arrive in Kirkwall uh, by aircraft, by the Kirkwall Airport. And the yellow sandstone comes from an island called Ede, or Ede. Most people who visit the Orkney Islands say Ede, but it's Ede, and one of the North Isles. So this takes us out to the west entrance of St. Magnus Cathedral. It's quite nice to be here in the winter and have this cathedral to yourself. Impressive doors. As you walk out of the cathedral, what you can see is the community centre ahead of us. It's a 19th century baronial style building. It's actually used by the council as their community centre. Over here, what you've got are interesting impact marks. Now these impact marks uh, date back to the 1615 Stuart Rebellion. So Patrick Stewart, not to be related to Star Trek Patrick Stewart, and his son Robert Stewart laid siege to, uh, to Kirkwall and St Magnus Cathedral in the 1615 Stuart Rebellion. So the King of Scotland at the time, what he did is he uh, sent up uh, an army here in which to dispose of these men. And uh, as to do that, what they also did is they fired onto the cathedral um, with musket balls, grape shots and chain shots. And that's what you've got here. You've got impact damage um, out on the walls. 